From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. To ensure South Africa has the skills required for advanced manufacturing, industry needs to invest in high-end skills, according to National Tooling Initiative Program CEO Doug Van Dyke. Aneen Killian has a story. Van Dijk says that individual companies need to work together in this respect rather than competing with one another. He also notes that South Africa has a large pool of young people that can be properly skilled to meet the needs arising from the fourth industrial revolution. To achieve this, the NTIP recently launched the Future Production Technologies Initiative, which is the formal expansion of the NTIP. Van Dijk expands on the initiative. The Future Production Technologies Initiative is actually now the formal expansion of the last seven years pilot program that was called the National Tooling Initiative Program. It's an industry government partnership that was designed to firstly find a way for government and industry to collaborate in the manufacturing space on solutions. And the two specific areas of solution was the skill supply chain to modern manufacturing. And the second one was how can we develop enterprises to accommodate these skilled young people and make these enterprises change actually to become more competitive and export oriented. So that was the two objectives of what was previously the National Tooling Initiative. As a result of successfully achieving that industry, which is now through the manufacturing circle and the various major associations involved in manufacturing, coming to the conclusion that this is what they want more of and they wanted to upscale the program. Government has thus agreed through the policy frameworks of the Department of Trade and Industry to make increased investment into the future through the same mechanisms. We have a national treasury budget line on this program, but we also have industry funding support uh, on the program, is to expand that, but not sector specific. In other words, we are not focused on automotive or on mining or on agro-processing. We are focused on the production technologies of the future that will be involved in all of them. Van Dijk further points out that government has agreed to fund the program further through policy frameworks in the Department of Trade and Industry, together with industry, to make increased investments into manufacturing's future. He stresses that the program is not sector specific and that it is focused on production technologies of the future that will be involved in manufacturing across the board. He says that NTIP will also integrate the existing skill supply system, including technical and vocational education and training colleges and technological universities. NTIP wants to keep them intertwined as a component of a futuristic solution. He highlights that if the program is able to produce young people with proper manufacturing competencies, they will be employable instantly. It's purely an al- a question of alignment. If we can produce young people with the competencies required on the factory floor, they will be employed tomorrow. Because we've had a lag of the 20 years of not producing aligned young people, There are a lot of young people sitting at home with certificates in their hands and qualifications. There are openings in factories. The Deloitte report for global manufacturing competitiveness states that there's a massive amount of jobs unfilled due to what is called the skills gap. So all we're saying on this program is how difficult is it to fill the skills gap? So can we take young people out of any environment in South Africa find a way to properly assess them for a suitability in a career path in manufacturing. Can you, we entice you into a career in manufacturing first? Are you excited about the prospect? And if so, if you have a, a profile that indicates things like resilience, spatial orientation and abstract reasoning, we have found that's ideal candidates for a career in manufacturing. Other news making headlines. Omnia lifts 2018 profit by 12% year on year. JC listed Omnia Holdings posted positive results with the financial year ended March 31st, with group revenue having increased by 7% year on year to 17.37 billion rand as a result of a stronger performance by the mining and chemical divisions. Mainly growth in mining, mining turnover in South Africa. We have been fortunate to, to gain some additional business in South Africa and also the international growth of our business in speciality fertilizers, the growth in Zambia. Um, so as, as fundamentally mining is up, chemicals is up, it was a strategy for us to increase our volume in chemicals to get uh, more operational efficiencies, but fertilizer f- overall flat, 
due to the drought in the southern, southern African region, set off a little bit by some growth in international markets. The chemicals business in South Africa is under a lot of pressure. We haven't seen growth in the mining industry or, or, the, or the, sorry, the manufacturing industry for a long time. And what it does is it puts pressure on the business because your, your, your overheads keeps on going up and, and, your, and your top line doesn't. So for us, the strategy is to, to find new principles to be able to increase our total volumes in, in, in the, the pressed market that we have so that we can effectively try and nullify the, the impact of, of, of the situation. But really the strategy for chemicals is to use our brand and our base business in South Africa, which is a very well-known, well-respected business, to grow our volumes internationally because there are more opportunities in international markets. That's Kruma Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.